Hey everybody, welcome to the Real United States and welcome to the Patuxet Wildlife Refuge. Here in Southern Maryland, this is the largest, I believe, and, and certainly one of the most prominent wildlife refuges in the United States. And it is 12,841 acres. So that's 52-ish uh, square kilometers for those of you overseas or almost exactly, just slightly over 20 square miles of wildlife refuge here in Southern Maryland. We're about 20 miles or so just out of Washington, D.C. And this is part of the Department of the Interior as a whole. And it is largely devoted to wildlife conservation because so much of this area has grown up in well, in quite some time it's been growing and growing, but certainly in the last few decades, it has grown so much that it has pushed out the habitat of a lot of wildlife and especially migratory birds. So this is here in part for those migratory birds, but also is to create a habitat for all the wildlife that have been pushed out by the surrounding development of the Washington, D.C. area. Now, the, the Patuxet Wildlife refuge is divided into three tracks, a north track, a central track, and a southern track. We're in the southern track right now, and we're here in front of the Patuxet Research, or the Patuxet Wildlife Refuge Visitor Center. These names are all very similar, and sometimes I get a problem stumbling over them. But this is the visitor center for this entire complex. You can, it's open to the public seven days a week. You can come down here. They have programs inside sometimes. There's displays and literature. There's also an observatory out over one of the wetlands. Now, mentioning that, I want to talk about that the wildlife preserve here, the refuge, has different habitats and uh, summer forests. There's a meadow and of course wetlands for things like aquatic birds and geese and the ducks and those things that migrate through here. So they've tried to create these environments for all the different types of wildlife that we might have here. Now in the center track of this gigantic facility is the headquarters for the refuge and also for the Patuxet Wildlife Research Center. And that is, amongst other things, the largest environmental science education center in the United States. And they are predominantly involved in, of course, just like the name says, wildlife research, uh, habitat management, and things associated with maintaining the wildlife here in the United States and, and knowing more about it. So. Um, I'm not going to have an opportunity to go in and talk with those folks, obviously. That, that's a, you know, a research facility. So, uh, but that's the center track. Now, interestingly enough, the north track is open for hunting and fishing. <clears throat> yeah, I know. It seems odd that you'd have a wildlife refuge and then you'd have hunting. But hunting and fishing, to some degree, are used as tools for maintaining populations of certain animals at a proper level or a manageable level. Regardless of how you feel about hunting, it is a very real part of the way that natural resources are managed here in the United States. Now there's also observation places there, there's trails for hiking, so there's a lot of activities for you know anybody that wants to go and take photos or just spend time out there with a the family. There are literally miles of roadways down here through this entire center, this entire refuge. So you can drive all on through here. Uh, most of it is open to the public. Uh, you can drive down these roads and, and just enjoy yourself in the scenery. It's, it's kind of like being out in the middle of nowhere, though, because it's just all woods around you. It's a good opportunity to see, you know, some wildlife, perhaps. I, I, we haven't seen any since we drove in. I'm going to show you some footage, some rolling footage, of what it's like coming in to the facility or Maybe it's going to be the footage going out, but it looks pretty much the same. And it's a beautiful drive. The inbound and outbound paths are single lanes, so you don't have traffic coming at you. You kind of got it all to yourself. And it makes for a very pretty windy ride down through the woods. The wildlife refuge here at Patuxent River actually plays host to 270 species of birds. And so some of those are 
waterfowl, of course, but not all of them. But 270 species, I thought that was pretty impressive. I don't think I could name 270 species of, of uh, birds if I had to. Anyway, there are uh, some cute little signs along the path coming in here. There's a turtle crossing. There's a couple of turtle crossing signs and a frog crossing. Obviously, they have these wetlands and these animals are moving in and back and forth across these roadways and they would you know, prefer you not run over them. So the Patuxent Wildlife Refuge was originally created in 1936 under an executive order from then President Franklin Delano Roosevelt. And I understand it started off with a rather small or modest uh, 100 acre grant and has grown and grown since then. Now this is the sort of thing you would expect as to be a, an executive order much like 
the creation of a national park under the Antiquities Act. That these are acts that usually that the president creates these things, and this is no exception. You see behind me here, they've got a couple of different bird feeders. One for hummingbirds, and one of course for fowl that eat seeds and things. And one of the things I'd like to point out, there's really a lovely place, there's little paths up through here, is that it, certainly in some of the places, and in many of the places, they have markers for the trees so that you can identify the type of tree along with, of course, the uh, technical name, the, the Latin name of them with the gena and specie. This is a, a green ash. And if we swing over a little bit, dear, and I bumped the bird feeder, sorry about that. And I'm getting farther away from the microphone, so I'll have to talk a little louder. This is a willow oak. I'm not previously familiar with willow oak. It's got a long, narrow leaf, pinnate leaf, sort of like a willow, but it's apparently an oak tree. And of course, the Michigan State tree just across from us, the white pine. And again, they've got these cute signs so that if you're walking, there's lots of trails here, folks, if you're going to go ahead and just want to visit. Just as a nice walk, it's a very pleasant walk and of course a great educational opportunity for both parents and children alike with all these little signs about the trees. They could learn a lot about, well, trees as well as wildlife. Some of you who have followed us pretty regularly will recall that a while ago we went to Y Mill in Maryland, which had the oldest still operating grist mill in America. Well, I just happened to notice this, and this is, it says Y, W-Y-E, oak. Now this is actually, the, is a white oak, the Corcus alba is the white oak. But this particular tree, and we'll zoom in here to show you, is a third generation of a tree that originally lived to be 465 years old in the Wymeal State Park, right near where we were for the episode about the grist mill. So I just thought I'd stop and share that with you. For those of you who follow us along, I thought you might find that interesting. Uh, third generation, this was probably not from an acorn, you know, and then another acorn. These were probably cuttings that were grafted onto rootstock and grown from that. So the original tree, they took cuttings, started another tree, and then from the second generation again, they would take, cut off these new growth, dip them in a rooting hormone, perhaps, and grow them right from roots, or they would cut an angular cut and then have a piece of a tree that they had started from an acorn, and they would cut that off, use that as a rootstock, and then graft it on. I'm not sure which technique they used, but that is generally how you go ahead and have multiple generations of the same tree. By doing it with cuttings, you have something that is genetically identical to the original tree. So scattered along the footpaths, and there are miles of them, here at the Patuxet Wildlife Refuge, there are benches, permanent benches, outdoor benches, um, and there's a lot of them. So for those of us that are not quite as physically fit, it's really nice to have an opportunity to be able to sit down and yet you can continue along the paths. And they're quite close together. We're going to swing around and show you that they're about every couple of hundred feet or so, certainly less than a hundred yards apart. So you can kind of make a judgment on whether you can, you know, pass one up and move on to the next one or whether you're tired, feet, legs hurt and you want to sit down. So they've, they've done a very nice job about providing you rest and this particular one's under a bunch of trees. A lot of them are, so you have shade. Today we've got some cloud cover. It's not too bad. Beautiful temperature outside, but certainly here in the summertime it gets very warm and I suppose that walking for long distances in the direct sunlight would get to be old relatively quickly. So <laughs> uh, it is nice that they've taken some forethought to put these in shady areas in the hot weather. Now for those of you who aren't interested maybe in walking over miles of footpaths, they do have a tour here that you can get tickets in here at the visitor center and it will take you on a ride through 
the wildlife refuge. And I'm sure that that's also, there's some narrative for that as well. Um, this time of year, they, they run on the weekends three times a day. In the summer, they're going to run, they run every day. So for those of you who like, aren't really interested or maybe like me are not really physically fit and would prefer, you can actually take a ride through the facility and get to see all the highlights. So amongst the wetlands that they have here at Patuxent Wildlife Refuge is this body of water right here, Lake Reddington, and this is directly behind the visitor center. And actually inside the visitor center, which I'm not going to have an opportunity to show you today, but there is a large glass wall facing this lake and there are pedestals with binoculars fixed on swivels that you can look out over the lake and identify maybe some of the wildlife. Really kind of a nice thing, especially for kids. It's really kind of neat in the fall when the geese are migrating. You can see them, you know, coming in and out, flying, landing on the lake, taking off from here. So it's it's really very pretty. We've been here in the fall, so that's that's really a nice time of year to visit. Although we're here in very, I guess, late spring technically, but although I think of this as early summer, and it's really gorgeous. Most of the blooms on the, the local trees have passed, but we are still seeing some on some of the particular varieties. Looks like maybe mock orange or something, and it's really, really a beautiful place to visit. And there are uh, miles of trails, foot trails here, as well as uh, driving paths, so it's it's really nice regardless of how you want to go ahead and visit it. So I'd like to thank you for joining us here on The Real United States. I hope you've enjoyed this short visit to the Patuxent Wildlife Refuge here in Southern Maryland. If you've got questions or comments, hey, leave them in the comments section below. I love hearing from all of you. Just stop in and say hi, whatever you like. If you're new here, hey, pick subscribe. Come along for the adventure because we got lots more to show you. And as always, thank you for watching.